Adobe shares taking a very hard hit. You can see the stock off just around 17%, the biggest drop that we have seen in 12 years. Now, the stock plunging on mixed guidance and also its deal to buy design platform Figma for $20 billion. We want to bring in Brent Thill. He's Jeffrey's equity research analyst. He joins us now. And Brent, taking a look at the streets reaction, obviously a little bit of a concern about the price that Adobe is paying for this company. What's your reaction? It's a shocker. I think, you know, this company has been incredibly disciplined on their capital allocation. They've never chased a transaction with this type of multiple. And investors right now are hate selling the stock. There's no buyers on our desk, nothing but sellers, long only uh, upset that they would do this. And I think when we talk about a technology industry that is facing multiple uh, compression, that they would go out and, and spend, you know, 50 times revenue. Even if you double the company's revenue, they're still going to pay 25 times revenue. I think most investors are like, there's something wrong. Like this is defensive. There's There's got to be something underneath the cover that they had to do this. And why would you do this right now? Assuming the environment gets worse before it gets better, you got time. So there's a lot of things that are not adding up. I've covered this company for a long time. I defended them when Steve Jobs came out after them when he was alive, bashing Adobe Flash when the stock was $30 and it went to $700. I've been along for the ride. I've never seen anything like this from them. So uh, I would say that, you know, put this one up as, uh, as a head scratcher uh, and, and they're paying for it. Like the market caps off more than the, 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 the value of the deal. And that just pretty much sums it up right now. Um, so the results were okay. Um, the stock would not have been down as much on just the results. So if you separate the results and the deal, this is probably 75% deal related, 25% related to the numbers. They could have cut guidance last quarter. They chose not to. They had a free haul pass. Everyone said to the CFO, hey, you know, the economy is getting worse. Why are you holding on to this guide? And, and um, you know, so there's been a couple, you know, blunders. This is at the end of the day, this is a phenomenal management team with a phenomenal franchise and is beloved by their customers. And so I think this will uh, this cloud will dissipate at some point. But right now, uh, I've never seen the level of investor hatred towards a transaction that they've done. Um, there's been a couple head scratchers in the past, but nothing like this. Hatred, obviously, they're a strong word there. And so, as you said, that this raises issues about what might be under the hood that's going on there at Adobe. What is it then that Figma could potentially bring to the table? Were there any weaknesses that you think that Figma can really help strengthen Adobe with? I mean, it's all about the design uh, at the front end of it, right? So Figma has a great ability to take a concept and whiteboard it and then bring it from the whiteboard into the actual uh, layout of the design and, and then bring it, you know, effectively probably into... Adobe at some point. So Adobe was competing here, had a product for years. Um, many clients that we spoke with had both Figma and Adobe. Um, and so I think many, many believed, you know, there were two competitive threats that they face in creative. It's it's Canva at the low end and then Figma in design. And so Figma has won the hearts and minds of, of these designers. They love it. It wasn't that they disliked Adobe. They just didn't feel like Adobe was doing what they could have been doing here. So uh, I think many people are, are kind of wondering why, why why we spend that kind of money when Adobe could build it? Where's the organic innovation? Why do you have to spend this kind of money in, in the in the tech the tech wreck we're in right now? Why why would you go out and spend that? So it this is a head scratcher for a lot of our clients. And you're seeing it as a result on on the stock stock price. And unfortunately it's gonna cause dilution now for the next two years. So this is not a short term impact. This is a long term you know, uh, turbulence that investors are going to have to live with. Um, I guess the good news now is some it's so negative right now uh, that that might be uh, the, the best sign for long term investors to start picking away. Um, we were wrong. I didn't think they would, would have this negative reaction. Uh, we were wrong. But uh, I, I think we're right about uh, the belief in the fun, fundamental franchise, which is this still is a 15% to 20% yeah. long-term grower with a 40 plus percent margin. It's a wonderful business. It's run by the best management team. And I've said this repeatedly, if I left Wall Street, Adobe, the first place I would knock on the door to work at, mm -hmm. um, it's a great company.
Perhaps at this point you're hoping for regulatory issues down the road. Uh, Brett, you also cover Amazon. Um, what does the streaming NFL debut mean for the investor story, and how do you think the street will gauge success for Amazon in the entry? It's a rounding error. It really doesn't mean a lot. I think ultimately it's a nice to have. They're clearly putting a lot more money into content. I think it helps their advertising business. Um, there's no doubt, like it, it, it's it's a it's a helper. But again, it, it's a rounding error relative to the overall roll business. All right. Well, great having you on Brent Phil there for that breakdown. Jeff Fries, equity research analyst. Thank you for this, your time this afternoon.